And this is uh, an excerpt of a talk that um, I'm giving uh, next week at the Software Test and uh, Software Test Professionals Conference in Dallas. So uh, uh, there was also uh, an article posted on uh, uh, Tech Republic uh, related to this. So there, there is more information and I've got uh, additional resources at the end. So if I start talking uh, too fast, you want reference material, um, I don't know how slides and whatnot get uh, distributed or posted or videos or whatnot, but um, you're certainly welcome to, to follow that. So uh, with that, let's dive right in. Um, so the, the question here is really, have you ever wondered why teams have no idea where performance fits in an agile development life cycle? Uh, I can tell you that, uh, uh, it, that, that it's not a question that I have wondered about, but it's a question that uh, my client have wondered about a lot, and honestly, it has been um, the most frequent call I've gotten from potential clients over the last several years. And the answer really is because performance doesn't fit in an agile development life cycle. Performance is, or at least should be, if performance is important or very important, everywhere in an agile development life cycle. And the main point here is that uh, folks uh, as a whole, and not necessarily uh, those of you listening right now, uh, but folks as a whole uh, have this notion about performance testing being what they have to do to deliver good performance. And while that is true, it is far from the only thing that needs to be done to deliver good performance. So let's take a look at, uh, at, at kind of how I see this working and, and where uh, many of my, my clients and teams that I've worked with have had some success. Um, now, I have always said that performance testing itself is inherently agile. And I started saying this that the moment that I read the, the Agile Manifesto for the first time, uh, because it just uh, rang very true with what I was already doing and what my peers were already doing uh, with application performance. The challenge here is that integrating performance testing into an existing Agile effort effectively is not inherently easy. And what I mean by that, um, if any of you are part of an organization that is in uh, the going agile process, and, and I really, um, I have to tell you, I, I always cringe when I hear about going agile, because what I've seen so many times is organizations, you know, they bring in coaches and they get training and they do a lot of the right things, except they, they start with this notion of well, we'll we'll trans uh, we'll, we'll we'll get the developers doing agile and we'll figure out the rest later. And if you've ever been a part of this, you you realize that just because you're doing agile development does not mean that you have an agile uh, project. And when you try to integrate non-agile uh, pieces and parts, be it testing or or anything else, frankly into an agile development process, that gets very, very complicated um, to include uh, project management. So let's take a look at this. Here, here's a uh, grossly oversimplified, and, and let me say that again, grossly oversimplified uh, view of performance testing, uh, just performance testing. And, and it boils down to this. You start by, or if you want to be effective, you start by identifying risks, performance risks. It's too slow, it won't handle enough users, our site will go down, etc., etc. You design some kind of experiment. Uh, testers will often call this create a test case. I, I, I don't uh, prefer uh, to call them test cases, especially in performance land, because uh, most of the definitions that uh, functional testers use for test cases don't do a very good job of encapsulating what we do here uh, for, for performance. Then, then we create this test based on our design, we execute the test, and that's when uh, agility starts. And, and this can happen, you know, this, it, it might uh, 
sound or look a little uh, gated or waterfall, but really uh, risk identification and, and you know, designing a test uh, might take a matter of minutes. Uh, creating a test might be more difficult depending on you know, the tools and skills and whatnot available, uh, but it's not a matter of do it once. This is just whenever there's a risk identified that there is a way to assess, uh, go ahead and do it. Right, so this can be at a unit level, this can be at an acceptance level, etc. And then we get some results, and, and and this is where it goes really agile. We look at the results. We got to look at these results as a team, and what do we learn? We we either find a new risk, uh, and therefore we start designing new tests or whatnot. We realize that we didn't learn from the test what we needed to learn uh, to uh, accomplish our goal. Uh, we realized that the test itself, not the design of the test, but the test itself had some some, some bugs or some flaws or whatever. Uh, or we identify uh, an issue, and you know then we we go through this uh, this cycle. We're kind of familiar with the cycle. Now, so it's a repeating cycle uh, that's complicated by unknowns, estimations, and appro and approximations, and that's the hardest part about. Uh, performance testing anything uh, before it goes live. We're guessing how people are going to use the system. We're guessing how many people are going to be accessing the application at any given moment in time. We're, we're guessing what they're going to do during that moment in time. We're guessing uh, you know, what they're going to search for, etc., etc., etc. And so we can, we can run these tests based on our, our guesses uh, and, and probably we're also making some uh, approximations or guessing about what hardware this is going to be uh, living on or what cloud it's going to be living on. It doesn't really matter uh, in production and, and what refactoring we might do later to try to understand our performance results. So at the end of the day, um, running a test has, has a whole lot of built-in ambiguity based on uh, the, the sheer numbers of variables involved. I, I, I often say that uh, with an order of magnitude fewer variables, performance testing would be a science. Uh, but the state we're in today, it it's at best a scientific art. Okay, so again, here's another grossly oversimplified view uh, of an agile uh, work in an agile team. And, and I use agile language. Different people use different language, and I and I and I don't want to um, uh, belabor the point or or make anyone feel like I'm promoting any particular flavor over any other. This is just the language that's easy for me. So you know, what do we do? We we create stories, um, we we implement them, we we potentially integrate them if that's necessary at that point in time. We do some kind of acceptance testing, and uh, then once it's accepted, it goes into our uh, uh, potential delivery chain, right? Because that's our goal. We we have continually deliverable uh, code. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that what's done uh, is 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 saleable, which is a different issue, right? Um, so you know, you guys wouldn't be on this webinar if you didn't understand. Uh, agile and agility. And again, I am grossly oversimplifying, so please don't slaughter me uh, for that. And this is complicated by uh, often, in my experience, inexact uh, notions of acceptance and variable no notions of acceptance. So user acceptance is one thing, business acceptance is another, uh, budget acceptance is another. You know, in Agile, we'd really like if they just let us go and build our thing and we didn't have to worry about things like you know, uh, marketing, uh, advertised ship dates and, and, uh, budgets and all those things. But, you know, reality creeps in, somebody's paying us to do a job and they make commitments and, uh, we know those complications, but anyway, a pretty simple picture. Um, here's where it gets complicated when you put them together. This is a lot of lines. Um, and I, I've got to be honest with you. I did not create this little graph deliberately to be complicated. I took two grossly oversimplified views of performance testing and agility and put them together 
and I drew these black lines between things to kind of show where pieces fit together and I'm not going to describe this all to you because the point is that uh, trying to explain this to somebody you know, oh, you've already got an Agile development team here. Let me staple Agile performance testing into it. it. It's really, even with a picture, rather complicated to explain all of the interactions. And so, you know, if you built an Agile team from the beginning with performance testing in it from the ground up, it's it, it doesn't feel so complicated because you build those interactions in. It's when you're trying to uh, retrofit, if you will, uh, agile performance testing or performance testing into your agile development team that it gets complicated and and I haven't even addressed the point about uh, how different people and, and social interactions and jobs and the way they do their work and whether or not your your the, the your performance folks are good at interacting with developers and and, and all that sort of thing so um, needless to say it's a tad complicated. But here, here's the key point. We get away from these pictures and we think about what we're trying to achieve. Performance is something that begins, uh, it begins at the story level. And it doesn't need um, a performance tester with an expensive tool to uh, get performance tests, uh, performance and subsequently the, the, the testing or the assessment or the verification thereof into the cycle from day one. It does, however, require um, management to buy in. And if management is not going to support this, uh, whether, you know, whatever level of management that may be in, in your organization, it's more or less going to be, uh, in, in many cases, uh, kind of pushed off the table because it just looks like extra work. Uh, and people don't want to do extra work. I don't want to do extra work. But if you want to be successful, if performance is very important, the first thing you've got to do is get performance into user stories, whether that's response times or, or resource allocations. And of course, you say, well, what user is going to say, I want to, you know, the user uh, will log into the system and be, you know, appropriately directed to their personal homepage and whatever, and uh, expect to use less than 17% of the CPU on their uh, client machine. Of course not. So um, that's not necessarily. That's not necessarily what I mean. It's a complementary part of the story. I actually like to, to put some of those notions on the back of the story card if that's how you're you're tracking stuff um, for instance if you happen to know where your application is going to live or uh, you might uh, especially if you're working uh, on developing something that's going to live on an in, on a device uh, you might have very strict resource allocations right because you don't have much memory comparatively speaking on the device or whatnot so the point is if you don't if you're not aware of those things before you start developing your, you know, implementing, coding your stories, there's, there, there's uh, no way that you can be certain that you're going to uh, pay attention to those things beyond, um, you know, just what's normal, good uh, uh, development practices. And 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 this means that your developers, your your engineers. Your core team has to get involved. You need to to do things like code profiling. Uh, you need to do things like I, I talk about putting performance measurement into unit tests. And and what I mean by that is very very simple. Um, whatever language you're you're writing in, whether you're you know writing in um, objects or functions or procedures or beans or uh, whatever, it doesn't much matter to me. But if you're already doing uh, unit testing, it's very very simple to plop a timer right at the beginning and the end of you know your calls or your object or whatever output it to a to a CSV file so that you get you know the the uh, uh, elapsed time every time you run a unit test and then hey once a week pull up that CSV show a trend chart and, and look at what the response time is and and 
you know what, probably 98% of the time it's going to be some trivially small number and you're going to say, okay, that's, that's great, whatever. But every once in a while you're going to say, huh, uh, round about Wednesday I went from 25 milliseconds to, you know, two and a half seconds. I wonder what happened. So instead of waiting to the end when something shows up that's probably an oops, and by an oops I mean something that you go, oh, yeah, I, I need to change that or point over here or you know whatever it is I oh look oops I pointed to the wrong database instance what whatever it may be um, you can fix it in line before it ever gets to uh, you know continuous integration or, or uh, you know acceptance or, or whatnot it's very simple it's very quick you don't need a tool um, and then you you really need to make sure that performance is part of every story's acceptance. However you do your acceptance testing. Um, and one of the one of the challenges that a lot of people face is you need to do this, uh, you need to look at performance both quantitatively in terms of numbers, right? How many seconds, for example, and qualitatively, as in how happy are the people. Because if you're not paying attention to, oh, this is really good, but it's kind of slow and eh, whatever I'm not gonna pay attention to that because you know I'm doing this acceptance testing on a dev box or uh, whatever this isn't deployed in the real environment um, look that that might be fair to say but it's also fair to say wow we have just found a a point at which performance is not really acceptable let's figure out let's get heck, get a stopwatch you can do it more technically than that and figure out how long that 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 it's taking that's frustrating people so that now you have a better notion of what uh, per acceptable performance is and of course if you're going to integrate performance into agile you do need to involve the performance testers performance testers need to be part of the core team and here's one of the great things about performance testers folks I know a lot of a uh, lot of teams um, cringe when I talk about getting testers involved on the development team because you know all they can do is you know their little functional testing or whatever. Here's the great thing about performance testers: they actually can contribute. They really are generalists by nature. They don't have to spend their life in the little tool and reporting bugs. They literally can sit next to you and help you think through stuff. They can take pieces of code. And, and run some stuff on it. They can start, you know, baselining and benchmarking hardware configuration settings. And hey, if you're in a pinch, they might even be able to code a little bit. Um, hey, you don't want to give them the hard stuff, but they can contribute to the team, and they are incredibly valuable to have around. And and by around, I mean sitting, discussing, um, listening, bringing up questions about hey what's going to happen if and how is this going to handle that um, and you know it's it, the onus is on the performance you know these people with and, and I call them on an agile team I, I refer to them as the team member with um, a special skill in performance right because if, if, if that doesn't describe the performance tester on your agile team then you don't have the right performance tester on the team. So the, the onus on them is to gain your respect as developers. And if they can't do that, then you know the, it's not really going to work so much. But they should be able to gain your respect and contribute um, in a way that's not disruptive, that you find, find helpful and useful. So I, I really consider those the keys to success. Get them in there. Get buy-in. Um, make performance part of every little piece of your development cycle, of your sprint, of your acceptance, of your stories, um, to the right level, depending on just how important performance is to your application. So uh, I'm happy to take questions, and I'm going to leave this uh, this resource slide up while I uh, take questions so that anybody who's interested can uh, uh, can jot that down between now and uh, whenever these uh, get posted.